using a controller as a weapon. In this video we're going to allow a user to open the chest, pick up the gun that's stored there and shoot the ghouls patrolling the dungeon. <laughs> There's a lot to do, so let's get started. The ghouls all walk around using pathfinding and a navigation mesh. If you're interested in these details then check out this website. The gun object that we load contains a bullet and a collider mesh. The collider will be used by ray casting to pick up the gun. Once we've picked up the gun, the controller holding the gun will no longer function to move around or select other items. A complete game would allow you to return the gun to an inventory of items, but that's for another course. I've split the coding into eight separate parts. Let's do them one at a time. Step one you'll find in the load gun method. We need to make the scene the parent of the bullet. This ensures it doesn't change trajectory after launch if the controller the gun is attached to moves. This will be very strange behaviour for a bullet. I put a breakpoint in the code at the line self.gun equals gltf.scene and examined the scene to find that bullet was the child name. Moving it from the gltf.scene to the app scene is a simple job, just enter cons bullet equal gltf.scene get object by name bullet self.scene.add bullet. Great! Now we have a bullet mesh. The next job is to collect some targets for the bullet to hit. In this app there are several ghouls walking around. A ghoul is a skinned and animated mesh. We want the target to be the actual mesh. I use the same technique as I used to find the bullet mesh to examine the ghoul to determine which child of the ghoul scene is the actual skin mesh. It turns out to be children one. A ghoul is controlled by a player instance, a little class we've met before that makes handling animation changes and pathfinding easy. The actual mesh used by this is stored as the property object. So step two the code we need to collect the target meshes for our bullet is const targets equals empty array self.ghouls.for each ghoul arrow targets.push ghoul.object.children1 Now we have the necessary information to create a bullet instance. A bullet needs the mesh that we're using to display the bullet. It needs a gun object that defines the starting point and orientation for the bullet as it's fired and it needs an array of meshes that the bullet can intersect. We have all that, so for step 3 enter self.bullet equals new bullet, bullet, gun self.gun, targets. If you run the app now, you won't find any change to the behaviour, because you can't collect the gun, and the bullet's not being updated. We've got more work to do. For step 4, slide down to the render method and add this.bullet.update dt. We need to be able to collect the gun, so we need to add it to the collision objects array and add some code to the intersect objects method that detects the intersect object is the gun and if so, collects it, making the controller into one holding the weapon. First, let's add the gun to the collision objects array. Step 5 is at the end of the setupxr method. Add Cons gun collider equal this dot gun dot get object by name collider. Gun collider dot material dot visible equals false. This dot collision objects dot push gun collider. Notice that we add the child object of the gun called collider to the collision objects array. This is a simple box that's sufficient for our collision testing. We don't want it to display, so we set its material visibility property to false. Step 6 is in the intersect objects method. Simply add this.pickupgun controller. Notice that this uses a method of the app. Let's review that method. We set the gun's position to the origin since it's going to be a child of the controller. And we set its orientation, the quaternion property, to the identity. That simply means it's not rotated. Then we hide the line that comes from the controller and add the gun as a child of the controller. We set the user data gun property to true and remove the grip, the visual model of the controller, 
from the dolly. Now the hand that collected the gun is holding the gun and it moves as the hand moves. Nearly there. Step 7 is in the on select start method. Add this code. Self.sounds.shot play self.bullet.fire The bullet will need to be ejected from the barrel of the gun in the direction the gun is facing. To handle its motion we're using the separate class bullet that is added as an import. We initialized an instance of this class in step 3. The bullet class has a fire method. By calling the fire method the bullet will look after itself regarding the positioning of the mesh in the scene and testing for hits. If a hit occurs then you almost certainly want to add a callback event and the bullet class supports the hit event which leads us to the final step, step 8. Slide up to the load gun method where we started and add this code block self.bullet.addEventListener hit ev arrow const tmp equals self.ghouls.filter ghoul arrow ev.hitObject equals ghoul.object.children1 If tmp.length is greater than zero self.sounds.snarl.play const ghoul equals tmp0 ghoul.action equals die ghoul.dead equals true ghoul.calculatedPath equals null ghoul.currentAction.loop equals 3.loop once ghoul.currentaction.clamp when finished equals true ghoul.mixer.addEventListener finished e arrow self.scene.remove ghoul.object self.ghouls.splice self.ghouls.indexOfGhoul1 That's a little more complex. Let's take it one line at a time. The app has a ghouls array and the bullet has an array of the skin meshes that are the visible part of the ghoul. When a bullet hits one of its targets, it dispatches a hit event that includes this mesh as the property hit object. The first line of this code block filters the ghoul's array to just the element that matches this hit object. If the new array TMP has a length greater than zero, then we've found the target in our ghoul's array and can handle a die animation. We trigger a sound and set an object to be the first item and only item in the TMP array. By setting action to die, this is a setter function and will trigger the die animation. We set a property of the ghoul dead to true and set its path to null. We don't want the dead ghoul to keep patrolling. Because a die action should not loop, we set the loop property to loop once and set clamp when finished to true. This stops the animation jumping back to the start at the end of the animation. Finally we add a finished event to the mixer that removes the ghoul object from the scene when the die animation completes and we remove the ghoul from the ghoul's array. Now you can run the app, teleport to the chest, open the chest, select the gun and shoot the ghouls. The basis of many games. Great work! By making a user feel that they're in a different environment, VR can be a very useful tool for training. This video is from my Udemy course, Learn to Create WebXR VR and AR Experiences with 3GS. Get the full course at a great discount by following the link at nicklever.com forward slash courses.